So King David, could you please tell us something about your relationship with Nathan, the prophet? Ah, Nathan. Uh, Nathan was, was always, uh, first and foremost, a, a buddy of mine. Uh, Nathan was with me uh, since the very beginning. I, I'm so glad that that old prophet Samuel uh, died before I came king, because uh, le let me tell you, he would have been in a lot of trouble. But Nathan, uh, I, I mostly had Nathan in my back pocket. He was, he was completely and totally committed uh, to my political aims. He, he recognized me. As a, as, as, a, as a person on the rise at the very beginning, when I first showed up at, in, in Saul's court as a musician, he, he, hitched, he hitched himself to me, to my political fortunes, and, and he was utterly and completely dedicated and loyal to me uh, more than just about anybody else. But, uh, but there's, there was one thing about Nathan, and that's that uh, he was one of the only people in my palace who could actually say no to me. He was one of the only people who could actually tell me off. There were, I, I could think of three in my entire career that I would let, let get away with that without having them beheaded. Uh, one was Nathan. The other was my military commander, uh, um, um, Joab. And, and the final one was, of course, my, my favorite wife, Bathsheba. Anyway, Nathan could tell me off. Uh, Nathan could, could say no to me. Uh, but he was my, he was my buddy. He ha he had guts, but uh, uh, still he was he was in my camp. Uh, th there was one time, uh, I everything had been going well for me. I, I I was made king over all of Israel. I had established my capital in, in Jerusalem, a, a city which which the tribes had not been able to conquer, and King Saul had not been able to conquer. Only only David, with my mighty men, I was able to take that city down, and I made it my city. They actually called it the city of David. Established my capital. I moved the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh uh, out of its storage place, and I moved it into Jerusalem, and I set it up there. And all, all the lines of power in Israel belonged to me. I held absolute power. Uh, but there was one thing that was bothering me, and that was that Ark. It was, it was, it was in a tent. The Ark had always been in a tent, and I set up a tent for it in Jerusalem, uh, but I was living in a palace. I was living in a palace with cedar beams and, and beautiful curtains and, uh, and, and, and stonework and car, and, and, and Yahweh was living in a tent. It, it bothered me somehow. So I, I went up to Nathan. I said, Nathan, I, I'd like to build a palace for Yahweh. And Nathan thought it was a great idea. In fact, uh, Nathan thought all my ideas were great ideas. So. I set out to do it, but the next morning, Nathan came back and he was, he was visibly shaken. He, was, he obviously had gotten no sleep the night before. He hadn't eaten. His breath stunk. Uh, he, he, he was sweating. And, and he asked for an audience with me, which uh, usually he doesn't have to be that formal. And he, and he came into my throne room and he told me that, that God had appeared to him that night and that God had told him that uh, he didn't want me King David, to build him a house. Now, I was very disappointed, and, and frankly, I was a little pissed off at Nathan for, for daring to cross me in this way. Uh, but then Nathan told me something uh, that, that was, is probably the most important political moment in the history of my reign. David said that God had told him additionally that God was always, always, always going to support my dynasty that my sons and their sons after them and their sons after them ad infinitum, forever, they would always sit on the throne in Jerusalem, that my sons would always carry on my dynasty. And Nathan told me it didn't even matter how my sons behaved. Now, certainly the Lord would, would chasten them, would punish them if they were evil, but he would not take away their kingdom, that I would always have a descendant on the throne in Jerusalem. And that was such a great thing to hear. That's, the, that's one of the only things that a king worries about, is how long he's going to sustain his dynasty. Saul's dynasty lasted just Saul. And I didn't want the same thing to happen to me. That was, that was great to hear. And let me tell you, we, we got our publicists out on that immediately. And within three or four days, uh, that pronouncement from Nathan was, was common knowledge uh, to everybody. Uh, so it was great. Uh, Nathan... 
Uh, Nathan also stood against me another time, and that was uh, the Bathsheba inc incident, and I, I, really, I really would prefer not to address that one. Uh, and now uh, that I'm just about at the end of my reign, uh, Nathan, always, always ambitious, is now keeping his eyes open, and he's latched himself on to one of my sons. I haven't told anybody which one of my sons I'm going to appoint king after me. But that Nathan, he's, he's hooked himself onto Solomon, Bathsheba's son. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so exactly sure that he hasn't picked the right horse in this race because uh, I have my eyes on Solomon as well. So Nathan is uh, forever playing the court politics as he always did, and he's lining up. Uh, he thinks I don't know about this. He thinks I'm just kind of old and feeble, but I'm watching him. And he's lining up all the support behind uh, his man, Solomon. And, 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 and we'll, we'll, just, we'll just see what happens there. But uh, I, I have to say that, that Nathan has been uh, a wonderful, loyal friend and servant all the, all the days of, of my reign. Uh, but, but, but more than that, he seems to have uh, managed to, to, to maintain a loyalty uh, to Yahweh uh, in, in spite of all the, the, the slimy politics and all the different ways that, that I've tried to corrupt him. And I've somehow never been able to get through uh, th that, uh, that commitment that he has. And I, and I actually admire him for that.